afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Other Minds and Hands. I am joined as always, uh, I'm Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined as always uh, by my co-host Maggie Park. And today we have two special guests who are joining us from a long ways away. Uh, this is Cesar and Sergio from the Tolkien Talk YouTube channel down in Brazil. How are you guys doing? Hello, Corey, Maggie. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Absolutely. And all your audience, it's an honor for us. Yes, well, we had a we had the very great pleasure of getting to spend some time with you guys uh, in London. Sergio and Cesar were both uh, at the London event uh, that we were at with uh, Amazon, seeing the the preview event um, that we were invited to, and uh, so we, we it was uh, it was I have to say a great pleasure of uh, you know a, a wonderful part of that experience for me, getting to know some folks that I'd kind of met that I'd met before you know we'd had a chance to talk before uh, on your uh, on your channel but uh, getting to actually uh, hang out with you guys and spend some time with you was uh, was very rewarding and a lot of fun so um, I would like to just start off just kind of tell us a little bit about you know, tell us your story tell us about how how did you guys get started uh, doing a YouTube channel you know how did you guys kind of get to where things are down there and so, what uh, your like first intro to Tolkien too? Oh Amazing. yeah, we uh, yeah actually yeah let's let's start with even before yeah. the, the 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 channel. <laughs> how, how did you guys From get the beginning. engaged with Tolkien? Yeah, yeah. So for, for a start, I I need to say I'm very nervous, nervous <laughs> now. <laughs> no kidding. I uh, we recorded more than a, a thousand videos, but. It, we in with English and with talk, the talking professor, it's, it's <laughs> an, a big deal. And I'm, I will do my best. Sergio, you, you start, just, please. You get used to him in a minute, Cesar. Don't worry. <laughs> well, um, here in Brazil, the first time we had Tolkien translated to Portuguese, I believe it was 1994. So it's relatively new for us. And uh, by the time of the first movie, the Peter Jackson movie, The Fellowship of the Ring, it was the first time I heard about Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings. And it was a friend of mine from college. He, by middle 2001, he showed me the book. Uh, and he told me, do you know this story? There will be a movie. So I'm already reading the book so that I can watch the movie. And I said, no, I don't know. But it was all that happened at the time. So by the end of the year, the same friend invited me to go to the movies and I watched it. And uh, that same week, I bought The Hobbit. The following week, I bought The Lord of the Rings and then The Silmarillion and then go on and on and on. So that's how I got started into Tolkien. And by 2005, with Orkut, this, the media, the social network, I began to read some forums online, some online forums. And I began to see that there were some kind of crazy people who treated <laughs> the works as real world, about the events, the, the characters, the everything. So I said, hmm, this is nice. And I began to reread the books. And then uh, another jump on time, by 2013, 2014, I began to contribute, contribute to a Brazilian token site, website. Uh, some translations, some articles, and uh, some news. And by 2000, by the end of 2015, uh, I met Cesar in the same forum uh, in Facebook. So I told him, well, there is a gap here in Brazil. There are no token channels in YouTube. I believe there is audience. So what do you think if we start something? So he was crazy enough to join me in this journey. And here we are. First, we planned, we spent uh, about two months planning how we, will, how we would build the channel, how many videos for per week. Uh, so we decided two videos is good. So on Sundays and on Wednesdays, and we would uh, alternate the, the, the host, one video by me, one video by Cesar. And then later on, we added one video on Fridays. So now the, we have three videos per week and many and some extras. So every month it's at, at least 12, 12 videos. 
And from 2016 until now, as Cesar said in the beginning, we have more than a thousand videos. And we are still on the surface of Middle Earth. But yes. we don't, don't, don't talk about Middle Earth only. We talk about tokens life, uh, tokens sons, family, uh, every kind of publication related to token. And we even, we even have, uh, 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 once, once a month, we have a video about C.S. Lewis, because he was a great, a great friend of Tolkien. And now we are introducing other authors like uh, George MacDonald, uh, some things about Robert E. Howard, Cesar will soon talk about uh, uh, what's the William name? Morris. Uh, William, William Morris. Morris. William Morris, yeah. So yeah. everything around Tolkien, fantasy, this kind of stuff. And our audience is great. Uh, I even want to say Olá, Tolkien Talkers, tudo bem com vocês? To <laughs> everyone, every Brazilians who are watching us now. Oh, uh, you have. I, I have to say, there's, 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 a, there's already a bunch of Brazilians in our chat here. For, <laughs> nice. uh, we've got uh, Inez is here, and uh, Marcia, and Lorena, and uh, oh yeah, there's uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of folks here that you've uh, brought with you from Brazil, which is fantastic. Nice. And another thing we like to do is to introduce uh, people like Corios and Maggie Park, uh, Wayne Hammond, all these great tokenists, so that our public may may know know them and buy the books and start uh, getting uh, deeper studies in token tokens works. So last year we had an interview with Corios and everyone enjoyed it. It was so nice. It was an honor for us and. A bigger honor was to meet him in person in London and Oxford. We spent two whole days with him. And we met Maggie there. It was so much fun. I believe it was the best part of the trip was meeting you guys there. So I believe it's a friendship that will last for many, many decades. And with our other friends we made there who are now talking by WhatsApp, our group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'll let Cesar speak a little now, and we are here to answer questions, to let everybody know how we do it in Brazil, and so on. Yeah, yeah, Man. that's great. Yeah, Cesar, we'd love to hear about. Yeah, how did how did you come to uh, to, to 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 Tolkien fandom? Um, were, did, were were you discovering Tolkien around the films also, or how did that work with you? Definitely about the films. Um, I, I always was an, a nerd. Uh, today, it's cool be a geek, right. but in my right. time, it's nerd. <laughs> you know, right. oh, you are nerd, such a nerd, and I'm proud of it. Right. Always uh, watching some movies, like video games and cartoons, and also uh, I, I I like to play RPG. RPG mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like D D Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Dungeons and Dragons. It this kind of role playing games. Um, also, it, it's uh, a cartoon uh, called Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, here yes. in Brazil, we call um, the Dragon's Cave. I don't know why, but <laughs> calls Dragon's Cave. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I always. As, as a little boy, I always saw this kind of thing and some kind of uh, wheel walks, uh, lifestyle, they are short, living on trees, and also get some courage, né? Uh, caravan of courage. And yes. I always, uh, uh, the endless story, and I always thought, well. Never ending really story. Never oh, ending story. Thank yes. You. Thank yes. You. Uh, yes. Never ending story. I I like this kind of thing. I don't know, but all my cousins. Uh, uh, I am a, a big family. I right. am on a big family with uh, nineteen cousins. Right. Uh, just right. just me like this right. this pop culture thing. And right. I always think I don't I, something wrong with me. I, I don't get it. <laughs> Nobody likes it. I love it. I don't know. I I was uh, listening Guns N' Roses. I don't know. Something is wrong. 
and I still think something is wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right in with us. This this year uh, I I will complete forty years. So it has uh, was a uh, twenty years about this uh, talking story. When the the Peter Jackson's uh, movies starts on, on the cinemas um, with the Fellowship of the Ring um, here in Brazil, in the first uh, of January, uh, the first day of the year, it's all closed. Mm -hmm. Just the um, the movies cinema. are open. The movies, movies, yeah. the, the cinemas, it's open. Just just to watch, nothing else is open. And my my friends of uh, Dungeons and Dragons tell me, come with us. We're gonna like you. Like the game. So okay, okay. Uh, in the first ten minutes, I saw the Shire and all the prologue. Uh, the last alliance. The last islands. I, I start to shiver. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, everything that I like it. In so much ways, uh, in the visual way and the music and the different kind of peoples and the intricate story, it's you all there. in. It's <laughs> all in. Yeah. It's a whole right. package. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <It's> <laughs> yeah. And so many questions. Who is there? Why is this? <laughs> if I go there. <laughs> and uh, uh, right. uh, blows my mind. And I go out the, the movies, uh, Sam and Frodo uh, uh, near to Inimuil, uh, yes. looking for the Mordor. I need to read this book now. <laughs> I need to know what is going to happen. Right. And at the last day, uh, the bookstores was open, and I, bought, I brought... Um, um, a one volume, single volume, single volume, single volume, and in the Hobbit. So I start with the prologue, with the the Fellowship of the Ring concerning Robbits. Uh, uh, yeah. So much Hobbits, yeah. people don't don't get it. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. So so slow kind of uh, writing. I just love it. I wanna know everything. <laughs> how they smoke. How they eat. What did they do? And I start with the Fellowship of the Ring and go, go, go. And uh, I was in the college uh, at the time, as, but with in vacation, vacation, holidays. I don't yes. know. Vacation. Yes. vacation. Yeah. And I just work and I go to work, come back to, to my home running <laughs> and pass all the rest of the day reading and start with uh, new books and with the internet advent between 2002 2003 i start i start to meet some some people and read about the the new uh, coming films movies and some years later i i met uh, sergio uh, in this uh, facebook forum and when I saw the kind of thing he thinks, how he thinks the legendary, mm -hmm. uh, I saw Michael Martinez. I love the Michael Martinez website with many different um, questions. questions and tricky ones. And I, I thought Sergio and Michael Martinez made some uh, uh, study with who is that? In this book, we have this. In the other book, we have this. this. I like this. And we we start to play their hack button. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Absolutely. It's amazing. Awesome. You know, one, one of the things that really strikes me about hearing your story, and I did not know that Tolkien wasn't translated into Portuguese yeah. until 94. 94. That's amazing. <laughs> That's 92, uh, to, to speak the truth, 92 was the Humphrey Carpenter's bio. The biography um, yes. was the translated biography. before the book? Before, yes. <laughs> That's wow. And by Ronald Kirmese. 
Yes. Right. In 1994, uh, yes, the Lord of the Rings. The Lord of Actually, the Rings. there was a 1970s translation, but it wasn't official. It was yes. off the records. Okay. So some people made contact with Tolkien that time. But right, right. So there, was, there would have been some who discovered it, but it was. Yes. But, but it, it, was it was it very widespread, or was it just kind of a few no, people know no, about? No. no. Okay. Was it more like a cult following? Right. Yes. That's really interesting because the, 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 the amazing thing. So, you know, in the English speaking world, I'm I'm older than a lot of modern Tolkien fans, but I'm younger than a lot of Tolkien fans, too. And I've I know and have met a lot of people who were, you know, who remember when the Fellowship of the Ring was first published, you know, in 1954, um, and who, mm -hmm. you know, ran to the bookstore in 1977 when the Silmarillion Corey. was published for the first time, you know. Uh, Christina is cool. Uh, yes, yes. Is, it, it, be waiting to to read uh, the Return of the King. Oh, imagine that! Right, imagine yeah. that getting to getting to Sam, you know, knocking himself out against the the gate in Shelob's lair yeah. and having to wait like a year and a half a before the before the Return of the King came out. Unbelievable. Um, but anyway, so I guess so I, I mean, I've known a lot of people who've had that experience, right? Um, of 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 reading when it first came out, sort of seeing how people first began to respond to it and everything. Um, and then, of course, I, uh, you know, I, I, I am. So I, I, I'm not old enough for that. I was born in the 70s. So I, you know, I didn't experience, I didn't, you know, Silmarillion came out when I was three. So like, I didn't have that experience either. <laughs> um, but, uh, but of course, I was, you know, around and I was in graduate school and teaching when the Peter Jackson films came out. So I was, you know, uh, in that kind of just to watch this whole new generation discover Tolkien through the films, right, and kind of be a part of that. And it sort of strikes me that you guys have had almost like both experiences at, at almost the same time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where, yeah. Uh, which is, which very, is very, very remarkable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, our generation, mine and Caesar's, it's, I, I believe everyone came from the, the movies first. Right. Uh, in my right. case, first the first movie, then between the second, the first and the second movie, I already had read the Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, and the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah. Sergio, it's more uh, advanced than me because uh, between the two movies, I read the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, but the Lord of the Rings seems so. Um, um, with many tastes that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. to read again. Right. And right. years later, I discovered the Silmarillion. And when I start to read Silmarillion was uh, the day I, I, I talked to myself, this is the book of my life, the <laughs> right. Silmarillion. Right, right. And right. when I read the children of Hurin, yeah. And I saw um, Tuor and Voronwe uh, looking, uh, touring Turambar in the, um, what's the kind of lake, Lake Ivrin. Mm -hmm. Ivrin, I'm, I'm looking at Ivrin. Um, it's nice to just be able to look at your wall for reference. Yes. Well, that's, <laughs> uh, Ivrin, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, a, it's behind the Elisar. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm a wobble is inside this this uh, kind of uh, wood uh, space. Right. Um, when I realized that Turing doesn't know that uh, his cousin is nearby, yes. and the two lives cross cross the. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. I and. This is the day that I start to study. I, yeah. I, I change the, the key. I change the switch. Not just a reader, but I study. Uh, I, I, I study. I, I, not a scholar. I don't know. I study. I don't know. Yeah. You yeah. became a student of the text. No, that's great. And, and there's so many people who have... Um, who, who have had that experience. There's something... Uh, Tolkien does seem to, to draw out of people mm -hmm. that um, that that desire to study, right? I mean, there's, you know, and I, I, I've known so many people who um, are just, who know Tolkien, you know, as well as 
professional scholars and things, you know, um, I remember, and I'm sure you guys have had this experience too of, you know, this, when you're, you know, when you're making videos, when you're talking in public about Tolkien, it's very, it's very challenging. Like you can't make any mistakes, right? It's very, you know, because there are so many people. There's always uh, an expert. Th there's watching. always an expert. Yeah, exactly. They're uh, watching us. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm watching you. <laughs> exactly. I'm watching you. Where exactly. are they tripping up? It was funny. Cause, so, so a funny story. When I started my podcast, um, the dean of my college was he you know sort of took me aside and he said you know this podcast thing is fine but you should really do some you know other real scholarly publishing as well and i was like well okay why do you say that exactly like well, you know why why would you want me to do less of this and more of that and he said well because if you're just putting stuff out to the general public you're not going to get the kind of pushback that you're going to get from professional scholars, you know, from peer review and from professional scholars, you know, like you, you can, it's, it's, it becomes easy. You can get away with saying almost anything to the general public. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, you have are you kidding me right now? <laughs> like, have you ever actually talked to Tolkien fans? That is not, like, <laughs> believe me, that is not the case. Um, uh, now, obviously, like a peer-reviewed situation, you do get different kinds of feedback, and it is useful in different ways. But, um, but yeah, it's you don't have, to, so, you don't have so, to be on your toes like you do on. Uh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. And but no, Cesar, that that world, that that story, right? You know, the, the it's just wonderful to hear. You know, more just. A people like that you know people like you who are who are just drawn into it right who you know you find yourself like now you are you know you are you are one of those people who can uh who you know who has studied and 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 you know can can talk about these things and it's fantastic and i just love yeah. how many gateways there are with tolkien as well you know that you didn't have the option before 94 to really get into this so like you didn't have a choice. It it, it came to you and it right. just it spoke to you. And I was the same. My gateway was the films. And my mom was obsessed with the books when she was in college and stuff, but I, I had never really engaged with them. This but is it a bless. Until... Your yeah. mom already read the, <laughs> the yeah. books. Exactly. Yeah. I mean she she grew up in the age where Tolkien was, you know, the hippie hero and that that was her. <laughs> um but yeah, mine was definitely mm -hmm. the adaptation and the care put into taking that text to screen and then seeing the visual representation. And then we got all the behind the scenes stuff that I was like, Oh hey, that's how films are made. I'm in. <laughs> But through the lens of Tolkien, we have so much to work with. So I love that it it grabbed you like that. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. We have uh, one uh, a girl who is our collaborator. It's she's called Paula Paula Dugais, and it's uh, another show we have in the channel. It's only for kids. It's called TT Kids. It's Tolkien Talk totally Kids. I was looking at that. That's really it's, it's yeah. really great. Yeah, yes. and she tells. Uh, Tolkien's stories in a language that kids will appreciate. So she never watched the movies before. I believe until now she never watched the movies. Never only watched read the she, books. She don't want to uh, break the, her imagination. Just right, the books. Right, right, right. And he first told uh, the Hobbits, and then Smith of Wooten Major, I believe. Right? Mm -hmm. Says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the perhaps, second season. Uh, we are so fancy. We have the first season, yeah, the right. second season, and the third season Organized. will be maybe um, Father Gilles of uh, from Han. Uh, the Farmer Giles of Han. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, I, we 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 talking about this, but Paula, it's a pro storyteller. Yeah, and yeah. It is is her profession, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we 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 are was in London, she called me and tell me, Caesar, I was invited for a big uh, South American event of storytelling and imagination with a guest of honor because the TT kids, nice because wow, they they nice. yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. the, it's the, funny. Uh, some of, of us, because of the channel, we started to work with some things related to what we do in the channel. Mm -hmm. Paula was, uh, some of it has some invitations. Uh, Alexandre Azevedo uh, wor works on the design, design of the books. 
Cesar is a consultant to the to Harper College Brazil. Uh, I worked as a reviewer to the new edition of the biography of Harper Carpenter, and who else? I believe Ronald Kimsey. Ronald Kimsey was also our mentor, our master, mastermind, and he he works as a translator, and so the channel provided us with many opportunities. And, and we have two um, uh, very different uh, times uh, in Tolkien here in Brazil. We have until uh, 2018, because right. from 1994 uh, to 2019 was one publisher, and they uh, bring many, many books, uh, many uh, books, like Beowulf, the mm -hmm. legend of Sigurd Gudrun, mm -hmm. and Kulervo, Kulervo. Yes. and uh, with a uh, one year, one year and a half, the difference between the the English publication. So it's a good one, right? But when the new publisher HarperCollins Brazil start uh, all this uh, potential and this audience. Uh, was asking for more, yes. more and better, and the publisher uh, can they, they they heard and respond with the the better books, better materials, more uh, events, and so we now we live in own talking's paradise. <laughs> uh, for crazy. instance, we never, I believe we only had The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in hardbacks. And now every every book comes in hardbacks. Before it was only paperback and different sizes. It was a nightmare yeah. to our shelves. Now <laughs> it's uh, perfect for uh, people with OCD. Every <laughs> <book is> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> That's excellent. And for the first time, also, uh, the, the, there was a simultaneous. Um, the books came out simultaneous as internationally. For example, it started with The Fall of Gondolin. Uh, yeah. Reinaldo José Lopes is the translator. Uh, hugs for Reinaldo, I believe you, you are watching. You can imagine yeah. this. The, the English, okay, the book is ready. They our translators receive the material, running, start to translate <laughs> just to make simultaneous. this simultaneous. The yeah. fall of the gondolin was the first, yeah. and also nature. Nature. nature nice. nice. It's a kind of it's a kind of crazy people work with talking here <laughs> yes yeah i believe uh, it, only germany brazil and england had simultaneous books. right yes. right yeah oh, that's amazing passion. yeah that's amazing yeah and do you find that your community is of a similar passion like do you have a really giant group that is just as enthusiastic as the two of you for all this material um look at those nods i love it yeah. <laughs> yes yeah, we're upset they are they are always asking what is the next book when we will have the easter of middle earth and how, how about the atlas of middle earth mm -hmm. they are always wanting more and more and more yeah to, to talk about numbers the last publisher oh i need to put my laptop on the energy <laughs> no oh great yeah all right i, I get it uh, the 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 former publisher um take one decade oh, 10 years to hit uh, 1 million copies the actual two years and a half wow one million and, copies sold and we have so many books to uh to public publicate mm -hmm. uh, also publish. Atlas publish uh, Atlas of uh, Middle Earth from Karen Wynne Fonstad is coming uh, soon. Mm -hmm. um, the history of Middle the, Earth is coming the, soon, right? The whole the whole uh, the history of Middle Earth that and is when when one book it's launched, the people buy it and already ask it. It's another and another. <laughs> right. We need more. And, Next. And also, they want the review of Talking Talk about the book. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the mean, book is already on the stores. I need the review. <laughs> Right. You all read rap? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, guys, oh, do you guys interact with your audience a lot? Like, do you take their questions and really engage with everybody? Yeah, great. Yeah, very everybody. much. And man, in many social medias on yeah. Instagram, mm-hmm. Twitter, and also the lives. It's the the best place to talk with us. We we kind we have two kind of lives. We have the open for a whole, the whole um, public, uh, one one time uh, once a month. month, once a month, and we have our uh, membership, and in this membership, our uh, members, audience, yeah. audience uh, can get into the screen with us and right. talk yes. like this. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a it's a, a, a small number, right? Right. Yeah, and they they have this this kind. Some sometimes the people start. Whoa! Uh, I need to show my books and and show and everyone. <laughs> awesome. It's amazing. The, we call our videos TT because it's the the the, the talking talk talking talk. So TT and TT numbers a uh, hundred. Uh, we we joined together. I believe how many people? Seven. Six, 60, 63 people. Sixty three people reading uh, uh, some some part of the books. Different because, uh, parts. Yes, no, different no, parts. No, no repeat. repeat. Right. Yeah, all over the the country. So, but of uh, course, they, they, it was a smaller channel. We we could do this kind of thing. Nowadays, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So, what do you what do you find in the? Because it's again, it's it's. I'm, I'm trying to uh, sort of think about the impact of a group of people who, for whom the the films and the books are simultaneous, like that, right? Because in 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 America and England, in the English speaking world, the whole. Um, a sort of struggle or dynamic of the uh, of the the films was you know you had people who had been talking fans for decades right and then mm-hmm. you had and then the films came out and many of the people who had been talking fans for a long time were uncertain about the films right and were saying many of the same things that people are saying now about the Amazon show mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. uh and then the films came out and then you got equipped and then you had you know millions of people loving the films right and then many of those people discovering Tolkien through the films and now afterwards right um but but kind of those things all kind of coming together what what would you say is i don't know if this is expressing it quite right but like the balance between people that is um the of people in brazil who say who would say I like Tolkien, like who would call themselves Tolkien fans. Um, would you say, is, are most of them people who are primarily fans of the movies? Maybe they've read the books, maybe they haven't read the books. Or would you say that, you know, the majority of people, you know, have, 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 have most of them kind of gone on to discover the books afterwards? I, I'm trying to think like what that discovery is like. <laughs> In a country where the books weren't available, were essentially not available before the films came out, right? Um, it just mm-hmm. it, it creates a completely different thing, and and uh, I have to imagine creates a different relationship between the book and the movie in the minds of of fans in Brazil. And I'm trying to try to understand that in some way. I think I think we could say that the majority of the fans love each other equally, or almost mm-hmm. equally, books and the movies. Mm-hmm. Because uh, everyone I know started from the, the movies and then went to the books. And right. even though they now like the books better, they never stopped loving the, the movies. Sure. It's always something they, they carry That's inside nice. their hearts. Right. So, but they are, they are, they are uh, how can I say, too, too, too serious about the new adaptation. So right. they kind of, Okay, Peter Jackson is my is my idol, my my little puppet here, my my doll that I love and I keep it here in my shell with the books and don't mess with that. Don't mess with Peter Jackson, don't mess with the books. 
I don't want anything new. It sounds yeah. like that. There's this movement yeah. here. Um, I I believe that all the hard uh, all the heavy users of all the hardcore readers of Token Brazil mm -hmm. always talk uh, in the cell uh, with another. Uh, you already the uh, DDR merit move marathon this year. Mm -hmm. It's this kind of uh, chat. We read the books and always watch the watch three the movies, movies, the extended mm -hmm. uh, editions. The, mm -hmm. They love it equally. Right. And but, it's funny because, uh, sorry, says there are some things that they already hate about the new adaptation, but they don't hate when Peter Jackson changed some things because they have that, that feeling that their, their first contact with Tolkien was through the movies. Right. I, I, I like to give the example of Blood Fiddle, who is never, who is it in the movie, and they put that, that, that elvish lady, that princess. And so if it was today, nowadays, they would accuse Peter Jackson of uh, uh, being, uh, how can I say, of giving more importance to a woman character than to a male character. So he is putting some yeah. political agenda to the movies and so on. Right. Yeah. It's, so, it's uh the the same old story, né? The, the hunting the witches, I see, and always uh, right. the, the the history of the humanity is like this. When electric electricity was um, took in the houses, some people took. This is a kind of black magic. Is this a sa <laughs> Satan's thing? <laughs> Don't use electricity. And uh, all this, this kind of uh, the, uh, many subjects about this. Uh, uh, I don't want to make some some noise about the the anti vax, but some kind of things about the the new mm -hmm. or the yes. the advanced is always with some uh, red sense. Yeah, yes. there's a real yeah. fear for change because we're don't, so- I don't understand. Yeah, everybody's yeah. so grounded in what they love, they don't want to see it messed up, which I get that, but that, yeah. that's the whole point we, we do this, of just like, let's talk about how change can be beautiful, you know? The, and, this, and this books will, will never be changed. Exactly. And you're not the Jack's move is also- yep. the, Right. Take it both, easy, man. Both, <laughs> both Peter Jackson's movies and the books are not going to change and will still be around. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's, yes. there's no, there's, there's I, really, yeah, I, gar I guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. really no worst case scenario. Like the worst, <laughs> it's, it's like the, in the worst case scenario, you just ignore the new thing entirely and yes. stick Don't with engage. what you like. There's, there's no, there's no, there's really no downside. No one's forcing to you to replace. Yeah. anything that can be before but we we talk a lot a lot about the hobbit trilogy yes. because we we don't like it we, yeah we they, definitely don't like it but they this kind of movie bring to us a new public a new audience this is a good because it's a new readers mm -hmm. and when they read the books whoa what a Peter Jackson was thinking. It's <laughs> right. a kind of good thing. It is because... a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, again, this, in my world, the worst case scenario is that the show is really bad and we have lots more to talk about, to talk right. about, like, you know, why did what, they was choose wrong, that? what was bad about yes. it and yeah. trying to understand their choices and compare it with the books and, and uh, you know, compare yeah. It with what and compare it with what we might have done, you know? So just right. having all of this, this background knowledge and choices that you make when adapting. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I can, it's, but, so yeah, again, trying to imagine this, the, 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 the sort of situation in the culture, like the Tolkien fans of Brazil, where the movie and the books really came in at the same time together. It's easy for me. I, it, it makes it easier for me to imagine there might be even more resistance to the Amazon mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. among because it's not just that you don't just have the book that might get messed with. Because, see, again, like in the English speaking world, for many of us, at least for those of us who are older than like 35, there's we've had the experience like we knew Tolkien before. Right. And even if you didn't like the Peter Jackson films or the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, film, like nevertheless, you've seen Tolkien has survived that. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can tell you from experience, like we, you know, we used to read and talk about Tolkien before we've been reading and talking about Tolkien since, like, I can tell you there's not going to be a Tolkien apocalypse if the, if the Amazon show is not good. Right. Um, yeah. I, we've I survived it before. Important. We can survive it again. Right. And they think we have to defend Tolkien to be like a knights of Tolkien and defend <laughs> him against all the corruption. Man, the token is there, right. like you said. Yeah, and he, doesn't he doesn't need defense. He doesn't need it. Sold, he yeah. sold the rights. He, 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 he stands up the sign. Yeah, he sold the rights. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, exactly. And, but but again, I can see how my perspective in the English speaking world. Um, you know, I'd been reading Tolkien for, you know, what I don't know almost 20 years before the films came out right um uh but again so for for a whole this you know not just a generation but like a whole civilization of people who have discovered tolkien in the movies at the same time right um to uh the peter jackson films are almost at like the cornerstone of tolkien fandom right and so mm -hmm. therefore um, I was I was actually had a conversation with one of um, one of the Amazon people at the London event near, near the end. Uh, and we were talking about some of the anxieties that people have. And I was saying, I, I, I think I do think that one of the problems, it's not the only problem, but one of the problems is that people there are a lot of people who still are very attached to the Peter Jackson films. You know, I know there are many, many people who for whom the Peter Jackson films were uh, you know, like a cornerstone of their childhood, right? Like it's, you know, one of pivotal the influence. Yeah. yeah, like a pivotal yeah. influence in their entire youth, right? Their entire growing up. It's has formed, therefore, part of the texture of their entire, you know, experience. I mean, it's like it really was that kind of a phenomenon. It really has meant that kind of thing to people. And, and separate that's, generational, that's cool. too. But my hippie mom that loved them in the 70s watched them every day for months. Right. The extended right. edition. You know, extended, as soon as right. one ended, she just restarted it. So in months, <laughs> this was on right. with all the commentary on different days. So right. yeah, right. yeah. No, so, I mean that's so. But people. So there are lots of people who are kind of in that category, right? And for anyone who is in that category, I can understand that it would be very natural to see any new thing, right, uh, coming in as a a threat, at least as an interloper, right? Just somebody who's coming in, like, what are they doing? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're trespassing, right? They're trespassing on this sort of sacred ground of Peter Jackson's films. Um, and it's really hard to keep an open mind, right? It's really hard to kind of reconcile yourself to that. And so and I'm, I'm thinking back to that conversation that I was having um, uh, in London and just sort of realizing in some ways, I think this must, it would seem to me that it must be almost an even more profound effect in Brazil where, you know, there are now over the last 20 years since the books were published, right, over the last 20 years since the films came out, um, uh, I guess almost 30 years since the books were published, um, there has grown, you know, this really vibrant and very heavily engaged, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, culture of Tolkien fans in Brazil. And for almost all of them, right, the Peter Jackson films are, yes. you know, at the foundation of that or, or, you know, have been sort of the introduction for that. And so I can imagine there must be a lot of resistance to the new thing, you know, which is going to be doing different things than Peter, you know, so the elves with short hair and all that kind of <laughs> thing. <right? laughs> yeah. And we take the blows because just because we talk about the series. Yeah. But we would talk about it anyways, uh, with London Trip or without London Trip. So we have to talk about the series. And right. only because we don't talk through the political view, we talk about what we see and how it compares to the books. So mm -hmm. people are mad, crazy, they want to, I don't know, to cancel us. So you may cancel. We, we want to talk about five people. If there are five yeah. people who want to listen to us, it's okay. But right. we are going to talk strictly about what we see and how we compare it to Tolkien. One, one of the major things we always try to follow in Tolkien Talk, it's never talk about politics, religion, and social, social matters. Mm -hmm. It's only about Tolkien and his, his words. When I wanted to talk about religion, I created another channel, uh, the Catholic Garden. 
It's about Tolkien in the Catholic Church, o Guardião Católico, in Portuguese. So, because I know that Tolkien Talk isn't the place for that. We only talk about Tolkien, the movies, and if you want to talk about religion, politics, uh, political agenda, it's not the place, mm -hmm. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. we, we, we understand that Tolkien is uh, the son of our system. Mm -hmm. And many subjects are the planets right. gravitating right. Uh, uh, around him. So we talk about C.S. Lewis mm -hmm. one, one time in, uh, in a month. And we talk about the movies, the old animation ad adaptations. Ralph the, Bakshi. Right. Yeah, right. Ralph Bakshi. Um, mm -hmm. the, um, the Rankin Bass Hobbit. The Rankin yeah. Bass Hobbit. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Hunt for Gollum. Uh, all the old. indie movies, all the indie movies Born of has, uh, yeah. has uh, we have 27 uh, critical analysis of the movies on the channel. We're talking about the Barry and Luthien from a French indie production. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the Hunt of Gollum, the Born of Hope, the Horn of Gondor. Uh, Even the forest of Tom Bombadil, it's a scholar, a high school uh, project, project. Uh, that became so cute, so well done <laughs> with no money. All the city um, was uh, crowdfunding to help mm -hmm. the, the, the children to, to make the movie. Oh, in the cool. forest of Tom Bombadil, yes. it's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, f I made the critical analysis, I uh, become friend of the director because in <laughs> this, uh, in the past, she was uh, one of the actress and director of the movie. Is a, is a girl with uh, 15, 16 years. And she made the uh, cinema, cinema uh, college. And her, uh, her way through the movies is also very good. And it, it's amazing. Think the book, the Peter Jackson, the, the girl who start made some screenplay. And it's, it's amazing. We, we talk about everything, but Tolkien is the sun. Right. So we're going to talk about the Amazon Prime. Yeah, and we're going to sure. talk every adaptation and this kind of resistance of no i don't know man you have 30 years i don't know 40 years you don't you can look the world like this it's right. a suicidal the world is uh, is uh, constantly uh, changing and improving uh, we need to to look every everything and uh, Learn to see the things. Many um, uh, uh, walls are falling, and mm -hmm. we need to build these bridges. Right. So right. I think like this. And yeah, at the end I... of the day, we're all nerds. We want to talk about this stuff. <laughs> There's so much to dive into. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, and it's the the thing that. Um, the the tendency to want to so that the the people that i have the hardest time talking to in some ways are the people who are um you know it says are you were just talking about how things change right and it's it's important to engage with other things um the idea that there's some uh <laughs> i was just talking on twitter the the other day with somebody who said that Uh, and this is actually not even about the Lord of the Rings. We had digressed and we we're talking about the Wheel of Time adaptation. And they were they quoted a, a line from the first uh, uh, episode of the um, uh, of the Wheel of Time adaptation. And they said the, the the people who made the show, they lied about because like they had changed something. It wasn't even I didn't even think it was actually a significant change. Like it wasn't actually it was it was angled in a slightly different way like the emphasis was a little bit different than the emphasis is in the books at that point in the books um but anyway she was like they lied about this and i'm like it's 
you know, but that that kind of mentality, right? To say like, you know, I've read the original, and if you if you do anything different at all, right? If you think <laughs> in any kind of creative way, if you adapt it, in fact, in any way. It's not only that's not okay, it's dishonest. Like that well, is that is lying, right? Yeah, that's going back to that language we talked about, isn't it? Yes, it's sacrilege, yes. it's a betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. Bastard. Yeah. I, I, I think this is pathetic. Just pathetic mm -hmm. because it, it shows so narrow view of mm -hmm. the world, of the life. Um uh, we struggle to bring more girls to to our channel mm -hmm. because because mm -hmm. the Lord of the Rings has so many men, uh, right. but the girls really love the elves in a kind of plot. So m many things about Elwin makes success with the girls, and maybe the series now with the new characters uh, that wasn't in the book uh maybe they think oh, we can put some more girl here uh, some black people there and it's okay it's it's nice it's nice it's it, it, don't 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 gonna explode the books or change the whole idea the the beauty of the story uh, yes. the beauty i believe this yeah. uh, what is is the good fighting against evil and persisting this is mm -hmm. the whole idea yeah yeah there's uh there there are a lot of um there are a lot of ways in which you can make changes like that which can actually reduce barriers to entry like it really can be a barrier to entry to people as you say i've known many women who found it hard to get into the water now i've known very many women who are enormous Tolkien fans, but um, but I have known women who have had a hard time, um, you know, kind of connecting with the Lord of the Rings because uh, it seems to them like a primarily masculine work. Um, and so, yes, if there are ways in which you can take the story and so that you are introducing people to Tolkien and to Tolkien's ideas and to Tolkien's themes and reducing those barriers to entry, that what i i can see no manner of problem with that you know and you can't so, you can't merely take the fact right um you know uh, uh cesar you're making a great point about um the elevation of arwen's character in the peter jackson films right the replacement of glorfindel with arwen uh right yeah. um uh, you know as you say had that been happened now you'd have a lot of people be like see they're <laughs> you know breaking the law for political purposes right in order to include mm -hmm. it um but what it can do is instead to 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 challenge um you can think about what they've done with that female mm -hmm. character just like when they added i mean i i still like in general i like the idea of the character of toriel in the hobbit i think that was a great idea um i think what they did with her character was horrible but not her fault um and, uh so, i mean they, you know but but anyway the idea of her character and of introducing her character um they needed to introduce some new characters because they did not have any characters that were showing what anyone but the, like the elven king is the only elf character Really, I mean, we get the we get that one scene with the butler and the guard, right? But apart from that one scene, we don't get any perspective on the story from the point of view of anybody but the king of the elves, right? Um, and so, for the film, of course, you have to introduce somebody besides the king or his son, right? Uh, in order to in order to to give some kind of texture, right, to the life of the of the wood elves of Mirkwood. I th that was a, a brilliant idea, and that it should be a, a female character was a, was was I thought an excellent plan, right? Um, now, that doesn't always work really well. Sometimes, sometimes when, uh, you know, when filmmakers do this, um, you know, they just they end up having this kind of tokenist thing, right, where we have like the token woman and, you know, the token uh, uh, person of color. Right. And the, the you know, I mean, that, that's that that's often and that can be done really poorly and really clumsily and can really detract. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's possible that that can be done badly. It's possible it can be done really well. Uh, and it creates an interesting opportunity for, you know, discussion and analysis and sometimes and, draws your attention to things. Yeah. Go ahead, Cesar. And I don't believe that one good idea with a, a bad result uh, change 
uh, his statues. It's still mm -hmm. a good idea, but mm -hmm. the way uh, the people uh, make this kind of execution it doesn't work, but mm -hmm. it's still a good idea. And we, we can try a new ways to make it work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Oreo, it's a great idea. It's an amazing idea, but uh, go out the way. Right, right. With this yeah. good idea. That's art. That's what you're supposed to do. Try things. Yeah, exactly. And also, there is only one female character in the Hobbit, the books. I believe it's uh, Fear and Kill's mother. So how can you make a movie without women? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure there were women in that world. We, we didn't exactly. have mm -hmm. that, but I'm pretty sure they existed. Belladonna is uh, quoted uh, briefly. Right. In, in we know the, that Bilbo the... had a mother, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, uh, in the Hobbit, Unexpected Journey, in the extended version, I love uh, and the scene uh, when Bilbo was a child, and we got uh, the old Tuck, uh, Belladonna, and Gandalf with fireworks. Uh, in his memoir, uh, his uh, reminiscence, I, I, I just love this. I, I, when I saw this this scene, I I, I thought, Peter, PJ, why mm -hmm. why you don't give more of this to us? Yes. Uh, uh, and kill the Azov, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. Hey, uh, so uh, Matt from Nerd of the Rings is uh, is here, and he was just uh, saying how he really hopes we get to dive into the civilizations of Rune and Harad in the show, and I totally agree. I think that that's mm -hmm. it's one of the really exciting opportunities. I think of of going back to the Second Age, where the dynamics are different. Right, you're not dealing with the same kind of political world. Right, you don't have you don't have you know, Gondor and Rohan, you know, uh, all set up and kind of ready for the story to focus there, right? We have this blank, most of Middle Earth is a kind of blank slate. We have Linden, right? We have Eregion. Those are important places. We have Khazad Doom, yeah. of course. Um, Varking is here too. So of course I have to mention Khazad Doom is one of the places that we have. But um, <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, there's, there's, there, there's so much wide open space, right? And I think right. it's a re really neat opportunity. Uh uh, when I thought about the Harad, mm -hmm. I thought how the hobbits in the end of the Terry Age talk about the Oliphant was yes. a legend. Yes. But if one of the Harefoots mm -hmm. was uh, near the south and saw an Oliphant in this kind of story, Not right. start to... to through the years until the poem was made. So mm. the legend that lies behind Sam's Oliphant poem. So you think we get the we we get the origin story of the Oliphant poem in uh, in this show. That would be very cool. Mm. <laughs> and maybe Fastochicalo. Cool. Fast, fast Fastochicalo. Fast, that's that's a hard win. Even people in English don't know how to pronounce that one. Uh, in English, yeah. I believe it's fast fast to talk along. Um, but it's 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 a, the only reason, by the way, that I feel confident in how to pronounce it is because it's in a poem. Uh, and so the meter of the poem, I think, in English mm -hmm. helps you to figure out how to. But I had to practice that one for a long time. Fast to talk along the, the giant <laughs> turtle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it'd be fun. Um, yeah. And thinking about um, thinking about Rune and Harad. Right. Um so on the one hand, we know we know two things which seem to me to contribute some really fascinating ideas for stories there, right? One, we know that several of the Nazgul came from there, right? Mm -hmm. um, we don't know Black much about, Yeah, exactly. We don't know much about who they were, but we know, you know, that they came from there. And secondly, um, we know, uh, and I'm thinking here especially of some of the stuff that Tolkien says in the history of Middle Earth um, in uh, Morgoth's Ring, which people in Brazil will be able to read in Portuguese soon, um, yes. is, uh, <laughs> is that basically Tolkien was talking about the period of time between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, basically when, when Sauron reveals himself and sets back up in Mordor, right, prior to the, and begins to prepare for the War of the Ring. And um, Tolkien talked about the cultural work that Tolkien had to do. He set out to 
established cults of Sauron in the East and mm -hmm. the South. And he, he said, you know, Tolkien said he had to corrupt their societies to the point where the soldiers of Rune and Harad are willing to march alongside orcs, right, um, without being appalled at that, right? And that, you know, that basically it's it's not, um, you know, the people of Rune and Harad are not intrinsically evil, right? They're not just, they're mm -hmm. not just evil races, right? Um, they're people, uh, you know, with their own culture, doing their own thing, but Sauron has brought them in. How? Like, what, what levers did he use? What kind of pressure did he use? How did he bring them around to, um, you know, to, to, to worshiping him to, and he, and he, you know, Tolkien talked about some of the, some of the techniques, uh, perhaps that Sauron might've used. So, we know that that was a process, and that was a process that was undertaken more than once. It was undertaken in the Third Age. It was also undertaken earlier on, but then Sauron was away for so long, they had to start again in the Third Age, basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of imagining societies in Rune and Harad, um, where on the one hand, there's an ancient... You know, there's there's this ancient connection, especially in Rune, where there was, there was a lot of worship of Morgoth back in the First Age, right? But then Morgoth goes away, and so presumably the culture changes over time, and then Sauron comes back and tries to revive it, right? So thinking of, like, the historical layers there, and... Um, but anyway, both of those stories kind of point in a similar direction, right? You've got um, the leaders, right? The the kings who are going to become ringwraiths, who presumably are not just evil from the beginning, right? Who are mm -hmm. themselves going to become corrupted and tempted uh, to take up the ring of power. Uh, and then you've got the cultures, right? Which are not themselves evil cultures, but they're going to end up serving in Sauron's army. How do we get there, right? It's almost like um, the attempt to go back and retell the story of the fall of Anakin Skywalker, right? Um, except for a whole civilization, right? How did they come to this? How did they, mm -hmm. how do the people of Rune and Harad end up marching in Sauron's armies? Um, and it's a, it's clearly, there's like a, a tragic story behind that. There's a really like, you know, a, a story of, um, you know, a culture that has been, uh, you know, stomped down a people that have been oppressed and enslaved. Um, you know, how does this, also... anyway, there's so many interesting things that they could do there. Well... We may also remember Sam's speech to Frodo when they say when they see that that Haradrim falling from the elephant, yes. and he says yes. something like, uh, "Maybe he he w didn't want to to be here to be making yes. war." And yes. There's a story behind this man. Maybe also, we we'll see Ele something like that. Also, Elisa, when the, he he united all the Arnor and Gondor, he starts to make some. Diplo diplomatic uh, actions mm -hmm. with the self and Aragorn was a great warrior, definitely, but yeah. he's wise, wiser. Yeah. yeah, he starts to work with the words, with the people. This is the real world. Right. It's not just a punches. It's right. a talk, diplomacy, and maybe we we can see some kind of thing, this kind of thing on Aaron. And we know Aaron is like a, a father's model to, mm -hmm. to Aragorn. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Aragorn know things, know how to walk, how to uh, look, how to uh, act, and maybe Aaron as a powerful warrior and a powerful and wiser man also can be a mirror to the future Estelle and Aragorn and Elisa. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, uh, Matt was saying he loves the idea of Harad being caught between an evil Sauron and a Numenor that's growing more evil by the day. <clears throat> exactly. One of the ways that I would play that story is that as Numenor becomes more and more imperialistic as they begin to oppress the peoples of middle earth more and more um to to play on how sauron would come in and offer to help them against the numenor mm -hmm. right so yes. sauron is kind of playing that from both sides on the one hand he comes to control some of the numenorians right but then he's also offering the escape from the numenorians and resistance to the numenorians to the people and so can kind of get them either way some of them get uh, you know conquered by the black Numenorians, some of them 
are freed from the Numenorean oppressors by the armies of Sauron. And guess what? All of them end up in Sauron's armies, right? One way or the other. And so, I mean, watching Sauron manipulate that, you know, watching the stories of the... And, and some people will certainly be resisting this, right? Um, All right. It'd be fascinating. I, I don't know if you have uh, this kind of issue. Um, many younger readers or gamers love to ask us, so you think if Sauron fights with Gandalf, with <laughs> some people fight with, and Who would win? I, yeah, always, yeah. I always ask it like this, Morgoth was an Valar, the most powerful of the Valar. Yes. The world is his ring. ring. Yes, his ring, It's yeah. all inside the earth. But Sauron, it's a mire. It's a low level, but right. with malice. Right. He, Sauron always work with the malice. Mm -hmm. with and also, uh, it's I believe in Simarillo says that every act of Morgoth had the finger of Sauron. So he learned a lot from the first age. Yeah. And when he gets to the second and the third, he, his malice is his, his much more increased his, his, his ways absolutely and so, so, once we believe that the blue wizards could be on the series because they went to the to the east to to face sauron's ideas there but i don't think you you see that but it would be nice to again yeah, i'm, the I'm blue not totally wizards. giving up on the blue wizards but we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll see perhaps the stranger i don't know Meteor Man, yeah, who knows? Yes, who knows? can't <laughs> but, absolutely yeah. rule it out. Yeah, if the Blue Wizards uh, gonna appear, we don't know. But they don't don't get out uh, launching a many fireballs and with a wizard. Um, right. Yeah. I don't wand. know. Yeah. Yeah. Wand. Yeah, no, yeah. it's another kind of thing. It's exactly. another way of the mm -hmm. magic and the way to think. If Sauron uses the malice to enchant uh, this uh, dark people with dark with dark age people, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. blue wizards needs to use her mer uh, his mercy, uh, the love, the compassion, the. Um, all the good things to uh, face the evil. And yeah. this is the, the war. This is the real war they yeah. fight. Yeah. They and fall. and we, we, can, we can even go even backwards in history because they, these men from Rune and Arad, they are the, 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 the first fall of men. They, they, they are reminiscence. They are descendants of the first men who fell from to, more, to Melkor. And then the Eden went away, went to the West, but they remained there. Yeah. So we have yes. an even backward story there. So very much. Too many, too many things to tell. Exactly. Never now, and this, many. yeah, they're always, they're definitely too many. But still, I think that there's a lot that can be done. Um, even though you can, I mean, obviously they can't tell the whole story, right, of the people of Rune, and yet what they can do is tell an in-depth story of a slice of that, right? So mm -hmm. I don't, we're not going to get the whole dynamic, right? Of first the people, like to take the people of Hared, right? First the people of Hared um, met the Numenorians when the Numenorians sailed back and were their allies. And then the, Num the Numenorians begin to oppress them. And then the emissaries of Sauron come and then they start a cult of Sauron and Sauron is their ally. Like, we're not going to get that whole process, that whole historical process, right? But what we can get is within the span of like one lifetime, right? Um, a setting which already includes all of that, right? Show us, show us a city in Harad, right? Which has as its, which, which, where we can see the historical roots of the pre-Sauron, pre-Numenorean culture, right? Uh, traditions that show 
um, you know, they, just by how they talk about the Numenorians, we should be able to tell the kind of history that they have with the Numenorians, right? And maybe you start the drama with Sauron coming in and working to try to kind of win them over as his allies and turn them against the Numenorians, right? Like that, I think, even within the time compression framework, which is almost an inescapable with a show like this, because um, they're not doing a historical overview like the Akalabeth, they're doing, you know, a, a, a you know, a, narr a, a, a narrative that's going to give us the, you know, people and their lives. It's it's different. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I do think that you can kind of still capture a whole bunch of this this stuff, even thinking of Rune, Sergio, like what you were saying about the history with Morgoth back in the day. Right. You could even do that just by having in the city where these things are happening. Have there be like an old like a, a ruin right of an ancient yeah. temple mm -hmm. to Morgoth. Yeah. Right. Which nobody worships that anymore, but it's part of their culture. Like they would, they would have some connection to that. And what would that look like, right? What would their culture? How would their culture have developed in the centuries since Morgoth was eliminated, right? Mm. Um, you know, removed from the world. Um, and then how does Sauron play on that, right? And try to manipulate that. There's so many things that I I do think are doable with even within the compressed frame of a TV show. Um, and I, I hope they give it a shot. I don't know how many, I mean, there are limitations to how many different stories they can do, of course, but, uh, I don't, I don't know and if we'll get both Rune and Harad, but I hope we get at least one. And I hope that it's not too gimmicky, you know, that they're not trying to like force all these little references in there, but it's really carefully thought out. And, yes. you know, even what you were saying, just like having a, a Rune or a, a moldering monument to that, like, Maybe it's also used in slang, like, you know, maybe right. it's it's some kind of term that references something that happened centuries before, but it's so ingrained in their culture right. that we just get these little phrases. Right. And, yeah. Right. Oh, hey, um, comment from Mr. Penguin, um, and I'm going to play the same game I played last week where I um, say things without saying things. So Mr. Penguin says, <laughs> the problem is the second age is a setting very different from the third age. I worry that they are trying hard to make, trying uh, too hard to make it uh, the third age more than it should merit. I'm not worried about that. That yeah, is among the things so. I am not worried about. And we weren't I can't tell you anything before. else, but I will tell yeah. you I'm not worried about that. And I have to say, we weren't worried about that before. I we're wasn't really, really worried, worried about, about it. That. Yeah, yeah, we're really yeah. not worried I'm, about I'm especially that. not... I'm, 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 I'm much less worried about that in the last two weeks than I was before. Um, and I shall the certainly age. say that. The third age, it's the, the own decadence. Uh, decadence. Decadence is the French yeah. word. That yes. I don't know. Yes. I, I know a, a Brazilian song called Decadence avec Elegance, and I, I think with decadence <laughs> with my hand. Um, uh, third age is a pure decadence with yeah. the elves uh, leaving, uh, the, mm. the dwarves and the hobbits start to fading. And it's the years of the man. So we've, uh, we talk about 6,000 years before that, it's a very different uh, environment. Yeah. yeah. With strong men, strong elves, strong dwarves, it's totally different. And we totally can say different. that the showrunners, they know it's different. Yep. Right. They know yep. it's different time. Exactly, exactly. And so, again, to follow up, Mr. Penguin was saying uh, that elements like the inclusion of hobbits um, are, are, seem to be a sign that they're leaning in that direction of kind of thinking more in terms mm. of the Third Age. But again, I, I, I would disagree. And here, I don't have any inside information on this, so I can talk about it more. Uh, and, uh, and that is, it seems, it seems actually pretty clear... Um, a pretty clear example, Mr. Penguin, of the other way around. And I agree with your later statement that um, they do. I mean, in order for it to feel more like Middle Earth, they want to include hobbits. I sure, I'm sure mm -hmm. that's true, right? But I think instead of saying we're 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 going to incorporate hobbits in the story because we're kind of trying to make it feel as third age as possible, I think it's the other. I think it's quite the other way around. I think they're okay. saying we're excited to take the opportunity to say. What is the prehistory of the hobbits, the stories that haven't been told, right? We know that, remember, in, in the Lord of the Rings, in the, in the prologue, the hobbits complain about the fact that the histories don't mention them, 
right? You know, Mary says things like, we've been around a long time, right? <laughs> though, though people don't remember and nobody tells stories about us, we've been around for a long time. And so we, we have absolutely no reason to think that there were no hobbits in the second age. There is no reason on earth to believe that there were no hobbits in the second age. Um, we don't have any stories from them then, but we do have those complaints about the yeah. fact that there aren't any stories about them back then. And so I, I think that instead of saying, we're going to try to bring the third age that like, instead of using the hobbits to say, we're going to bring that third age familiarity back into the second age. Instead, it's a way to say, I, I, I think that, I think that the arrow goes in entirely the other direction. We want to take the opportunity to inject some like strangeness into the third age right you think you know hobbits you think you're familiar with hobbits because you've met them in the third age but now let's imagine what were they like in the second age given what we know about hobbits in the third age what might their you know given that they existed which again no reason to think they didn't what might their culture have been like back in the second age mm -hmm. and of course that's a wide open fascinating question um oh, and it's that. always been my guess that that was what the show is planning to do with the hobbits i totally agree i totally agree with the the kind of the hobbits and uh everybody uh, is calling us a soda soldan so <laughs> Sellouts, yes, and exactly. so I, I need to i need to to make some critic about the right. The only critic that I really have about the Amazon, it's about the name of the the principal hobbit in in the in the teasers, because uh, we know uh, all the girls uh, in, in in the Shire has um, a flower name, right? Rose, Lily, whatever. But uh, the showrunners and we know that this kind of um, uh, character uh, in the um, Vanity Fair uh, publication article. Yeah. article, it's Eleanor. Well, we know Eleanor, it's um, Elvish, an name. An Elvish name and mm -hmm. with anachronism because who fought in Eleanor was Galadriel, an older who speaks Quenya and starts to, to speak Sindarin. Don't for me with all the information that I have now, don't make sense a hobbit called Eleanor. Mm -hmm. But maybe they have some crazy explanation about this. The, the idea of a flower name, right? Eleanor right. is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Naughty is a nickname. Okay, because we know that some hobbits have some um, interactions with the dwarf people. Right. right. Nori from the Kale Kalevala, no. Um, the the Veluspa, yeah. The, the, yeah, Velus the, yeah. The Edis, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Eleanor seems very odd because El, star, Anor, sun, flame, doesn't make sense. Right, right. Yeah, I hear that. Um, and I can't explain it. I, I have no, I, you know. Um, uh, I just, I, I, I just hope. Yeah, I just hope the Harfoots aren't in Eriador. I believe they must be to the east of the Misty Mountains, at least, because it's the first place they were where they were they were seen. So I believe they must be more to the east. I don't know if the, in the series they will show this. That is possible. That's actually something that I think I've been forgetting even to wonder about. But you're right. Mm. Um, where geographically, where the hobbits are, um, the, the first actually, time, the, yeah. the veils of Undling, yeah, between yeah. between Mirkwood and the Mister yeah. Mountains, yeah. Well, that's those are those. That's the oldest settlement of hobbits that on the Third of. Age, yeah, in the Third Age. Yes. Um, but even that is pretty re comparatively recent, right? It's only a yeah. mere you know 1500 years ago or something you know before uh before you know it's 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 uh yeah it's still relatively recent um in even in the third age um so i i would now okay anyway what i was going to say but, is uh, i think in my head i've been assuming that the harfoots are going to be an area door mostly because i think we know one of, I, in my own head i've been connecting them with the 
we need to see something. I think we need to see something of the humans of Eriador, um, the humans of Eriador, like that is the mortal race, the non-elves, non-dwarves in Eriador interacting with the Numenorians, right? And being affected yeah. mm. by the Numenorians, right? And it seemed to me that the Harfoots seemed kind of positioned to represent that, you know, that group, that that demographic. So I think in my head, I've been actually assuming that they would be an Eriador. But I admit, I like your idea. If they are further to the east, if they are, in fact, maybe they are significantly further east, right? What if they mm -hmm. are out... Um, so I'm thinking of like the, the, the things that we've seen, right? We know that we're going to be in Linden and Eriador with the elves. We know we're going to be in Casa Doom with the dwarves. We know um, we've seen some glimpses even in the trailer of what looked like p potentially the far south. Um, we've mm -hmm. seen the far north, right, with Galadriel on her expedition, whatever she's doing, um, climbing ice walls and things. Um <laughs> But I don't know that we've seen anything in the East. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I, th that might be Rune. Wouldn't it be fun if the Hobbits are in Rune yes. or somewhere yeah. nearby there? Um, because, mm -hmm. of course, we know that over time, almost all of the races move West, right? Yes. So if they were not, not only if they were just in the Vales of, of Anduin, right? But if they were significantly further East of that, so that, you know, Gollum's people are the, you know, the Harfoots after they've migrated west, right? Mm -hmm. They are as far as that. Out, out of the map. They are yeah. all off the map. the map. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, I had not thought about that, but I love this idea. I'm, this, is now, they... this, is, this is my new hope. My new hope. You've inspired <laughs> a new hope that <laughs> the Harfoots are in Rune and they're going to be our like way into the story of Rune. That's my... The only problem I see is because uh, because of the stranger, the meteor man. Because if he comes from the, the West, the, the, the immortal lands, so he probably won't be landing uh, east of the Misty Mountains. So... Well, but he could, right? I mean, it's yeah. and and but, but <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It just, uh, I don't see any rule that would say he would have to land on the western shore. I mean, if you're sailing on a boat, yeah, you got to land on the western shore, right? Yeah. But if you're flying in a meteor, you could land anywhere you want. <laughs> the right? whole idea okay. is so absurd. That <laughs> it's a little nice. bit absurd. Agreed. Why not? Agreed. So that, then, therefore, there are very few limits to you know reasonable <laughs> limits to impose upon it. Yeah, you know exactly. But, um, my, my 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 hope. By the way, my hope is that the meteor man is going to be a good guy, right? Yeah. That that we've had so many ominous, like the sight of him in the fire and the the poster of him with the apple, the apple, right? Which uh, you know, thinking of the 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 Garden of Eden iconography, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, um, we've had all of these hints that he's evil, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm hoping against hope that he's not actually that he's going to actually end up being a good guy. So we'll see. Um, I don't know why, but I, I think about Saruman when mm -hmm. I see him because much later on the third age, Saruman had this this secret uh, thing about the hobbits because of Gandalf. So right. perhaps he came first. I don't know. And that would be God interesting. With them. That would be interesting. That. that would be interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Corey, I, I really love the idea of the interaction between the um, normal man uh, meeting middleman, middleman, yeah. and yes. meeting the high man of Numenor, on, yes. probably on Guaflo. Uh, yes. They yes. they made some porch porch. Uh, loans, uh, ports. loans, ports. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ports. I, yeah. I, I, I thought in Elvish, loans. <laughs> and... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I start with this. When in uh, doubt, if you can't think of the English word, try the Elvish word. Try and the Elvish word. We'll able to help you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and may, maybe he start to, to uh, teaching something, um, and cut some trees. Uh, building uh, some some uh, village installment i think we'll see mm -hmm. that because then when we the map was first revealed 
we we saw the the map going yes. backwards in time yes. so the trees were were diminishing yeah so yep. i think we'll see that the exploration of numenorians and Middle and Earth. this interaction in the future i don't know if in the second age can also include the hobbits because we know the halfling halfling term was right. because the Numenorians is about two meters tall right. and they right. are halfling. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, no, I agree. And again, I know some people are thinking, oh, how are they going to be able to do justice to that kind of, so like the the establishing of ports and deforesting of the area around the Guathlo and all that kind of thing. Um, but again, they don't have to show it all happening like it's a historical documentary, right? Yeah. All you have to do is give us a moment further down the road and help us to see through visual cues, through, um, you know, narrative references in the dialogue that it has happened in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Bring us into, br bring us into the story downstream, but make sure that the world that you're depicting is the world in which that stuff has happened, and it'll work. Like that, that's that's a, a fine way. To and do in it. the world where that stuff is believable because it's grounded in Tolkien, so don't right. just make something up to make something up. Use what we do know from this lore and develop that and incorporate that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can absolutely just reference something in the background and have that stand as something much more impactful. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, uh, over, uh, 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 Zavoni was asking uh, Matt here, uh, um, but I, Matt can give his answer, but I'll answer too. Um, did you feel uh, like something you guys said could affect the series? Um, probably they wouldn't reshoot scenes because of new realizations from meeting with experts. I, I, I doubt they would do that, but, but I do think, I did get the impression that the Amazon people were very interested in what we had to say. Like they were very interested in our, yeah, I think and, that the, they were not just talking and then hoping to transmit stuff through us. They were definitely listening to us. And mm -hmm. definitely not just being polite. They were taking notes on what we said, you know, yes. and really specifically asking for a strong opinion. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so yeah, I, I, how is that going to be manifested? Like what actual impact is that going to have? I have no idea. Um, but I definitely got the impression. I don't know, Cesar and Sergio, did you get that impression too, that the Amazon folks were, were interested in hearing from us as well as showing us things? Definitely, and, and for, because they asked us first, what yeah. did you think? So we we could tell them, and what I think it's co courageous from them uh, because they stood there, and it, 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 we we weren't asked to say only good things. We could even uh, say bad things about the show. So and we went there not to ask about the show itself. We wanted to know them, to know yes. how was their relation to Tolkien and so. And from their answers, everyone was relieved, relieved, uh, relieved with what they said. Yeah. That's what yeah. people outside don't understand. They think that we were, all, we all re received a script. You, you were going to yeah. say this, this, and that. But mm -hmm. it was the feeling we, we got. Everyone got the same feeling. That's why we said almost the same thing to people. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> here and then we saw what they said, some quotes they used. Uh, when I, I myself talked to one of them in the lobby afterwards, I was quoting a letter. I won't say which letter, maybe perhaps another time, but I, I quote the letter and he, he, he started to, to finish what you I was finished saying. finished your sentence, yes. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah. wow, yeah. this man really knows what, he's, he's, what he has in his hands. And mm -hmm. it saved so much time in our conversations because we didn't have to provide <laughs> yes. that backstory, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, you're yes. already on the same wavelength as me? Great, let's right. let's chat. Exactly. It's, uh, that, that's how I feel, uh, how I felt. I I was very, um, okay, let's, let's watch this. I want to hear you. So they start to speak out. Oh, man, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th this is the ladder. Yeah, yeah, this is the cold. Right. right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 I really don't expect uh, all the dancers. This guy, they are heavy users. They yeah, are right. Uh, yeah. deep right uh, readers. Of course, they wouldn't change anything until the, the show comes out because there's no time for them. 
if they wanted to I, I think they have someone is is being the consultant for them and we don't know who but they wanted to to hear what we had to say mm-hmm. we, we had a chance to tell them what we liked and what we did we disliked yeah. they really know what they're doing well, and they... also they showed some concerns about the general concern about that people are having with the show and they talked about it too and we liked the answer also yeah yeah yep. no it is funny I, i i couldn't help but laugh when we came back and we had this you know we we all had this very similar experience and reaction uh and then people are like well it just shows that it's a conspiracy because you guys are all saying the same <laughs> thing and it's like seriously like okay so if a group of people see one guy shoot somebody else and they all agree right because they all saw the same thing that that guy's mm-hmm. like does that prove it's a conspiracy like it's like it's called <laughs> eyewitness testimony like we were all there yeah. we all heard the same thing we, you know and we're all agreeing about the thing that we heard like that's actually normally that's called corroborating evidence yeah. you know like it's it's the way it's, it's the way it and, works and and this is a room of people that can't agree on many things so. <laughs> yes. yes exactly Yeah, yes. it, it, this kind of conspiracy t- theories it's it's new for me because my generation <laughs> was always uh, on on vax always uh, believe on this on the science uh, so many things in my generation uh, know some things and i saw my my friends my contemporary fairies uh, friends talking some things i Man, why you think about conspiracy? Why you think everybody think in the just world just a hobby of some people? Yeah. 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 It's it's it is funny and of course as uh, as several it people sells. um were pointing yeah. out I think it was uh, Nick was pointing out um of course all the people who are going around saying hateful and abusive things are all saying the same thing too does that prove yeah. that somebody's paying them to <laughs> to, to, to to say those things <laughs> right <laughs> i mean uh so yeah it's it's all I, it's all kind of similar. I might have said this last week too but i like i don't know how you guys feel i still think they didn't show us much Right. It was very minimal. We didn't see mm-hmm. story arcs, you know, we just saw yeah. kind of an overview. I think that was purposeful as well. They didn't give us a lot of fodder, but what they did give us was street cred of the creators. You know, and that was mm-hmm. much more important to us of like, okay. Yeah. I'll exactly. see what comes I mean, next and I'm open to it because you guys you guys, you know. That's where I'm at. for instance I, I, I think someone sure, said yeah. in, in our group uh, that's When Pete, when we sh- we watched Peter Jackson the extras of the DVDs, everyone uh, uh, saw that he was a, a hard hardcore. What's Maggie? Fan. What's Maggie? Maggie said that uh, yes. Yeah. I yeah. got yeah. a group. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the chance to see something like that when yeah. we we went to the questions. It's that it's credibility, you know, like there's such mm-hmm. a distrust of the creator because they are interpreting something that we revere as biblical word you know you cannot do mm-hmm. that because the creator has deemed it thus right. so mm-hmm. if you all of a sudden have a creator that says oh I'm, i didn't read the book i'm just going to disregard it no 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 <laughs> but right. if you have a creator yes. that can keep up with you and understands and you know mm-hmm. and we call it fan speak and adaptation and fan studies where like if you can speak the same language and you can rate each other's knowledge based on your fan speak like you guys are echelons above me in fan speak because you're referencing things i don't know you know but like mm-hmm. if if a creator can do that with a fan then street cred yeah. it is just established yeah. you 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 will you uh, talk about this on the first video about the oxford and i, I don't remember the, the right word but you can fake this yeah you oh, can yeah. You uh, uh, rehearsal uh, yeah. this kind mm-hmm. of thing you just have and, inside and, and like our group was really challenging that fan speak they were really raising the bar yes. and those guys met them you know mm-hmm. so like There you yeah. there you can't take that. There wasn't time for them to quit Google that on their phone because you're not going to find that web page. Yeah. Like it just right. doesn't exist. Exactly. Or, or some some point in the yeah. year. Oh right, 
<laughs> you, you, you cooked this. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> right, is, exactly. He's inside her, her uh, they had. Their heads, Their absolutely. heads. Yeah, like yeah. I said, Sergio, that he could not have rehearsed being able to complete the quotation you started right. quoting from the letters. Mm -hmm. right? Like that's, yeah. you can't, you can't prep that. Like you can't prep that. <laughs> um, but, and, but this is exactly why, since our coming back to what you were, uh, your uneasiness about uh, the name Nori and how it doesn't seem to make any sense, right? And I, I agree, I, I can't make any sense of it. Um, I can't explain it, but this is why I don't feel, I mean, I said before, I don't feel any anxiety about this show. And this is why I don't feel no. anxiety, right? I'm not saying that I necessarily know I'm going to love it, but I'm not worried about that. I, I, I share that question. Like, I agree. Like, it doesn't make sense. I can't explain it. I wonder how, I wonder why they did that this way. Right. Um, but having met them and having seen how deeply immersed in this there, I feel confident they have an answer. Maybe I'll like the answer. Maybe I won't like the answer, right. but I feel confident that they're not just throwing stuff out. Right. I mean, it would have been possible. Um, I, I was uneasy about it before. Like, oh man, like, cause it's very possible that somebody who doesn't know Tolkien that well, someone who's just kind of reading the Lord of the Rings as a source text might think, oh, hey, so Sam's daughter is named Eleanor. She's a Hobbit lass. And so therefore it's cool to name Hobbit girls Eleanor. So this will be a little Easter egg reference to the, uh, to the Lord of the Rings book and fans will like that, right? I can imagine that going through somebody's head, right? Um, but there's a tone deafness to Tolkien's world in that kind of thinking, right? Cesar, as you said, yeah, you can say, it, it doesn't make sense in Tolkien's world um, to do it that way unless there's an explanation, right? Unless you can, uh, you can, uh, they have in fact invented a story which makes sense of her name and uh, makes it work. And I have hopes that that yeah, is true. You know, I, 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 after meeting them, I find it likelier to believe mm. that they have an interesting story invented as to why she came to be named Eleanor. I believe that more quickly than I believe that they just kind of threw out that name because, you know, it would be a cool reference to Sam's daughter um, right. all by itself. Uh, th there's one thing that since the, the teaser, I, I, I always say this, uh, that, that I hate already about the show, is the, the point, not the pointy years, but the way they are used there. Because right. it's it's like something to to make a difference among races, but Tolkien never used the point pointy years to differentiate to make a difference among the races. It mm. was always about the eyes, the the, the how voice. they stand, yeah. the voice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing I don't like about the show. But I think thinking of as a showrunner or someone who's writing the series, they they perhaps they they are pointing to non-token fans, the ones who will get into token now. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps they need need this to 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 see that they are very different races. But I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I agree more of a big, I mean, no, as you say, no big deal is made of it at any point in Tolkien's writings. But here, and I, you know, Maggie might be able to say more about this, but the other thing that it strikes me is not just um, reaching out to non-talking fans, but um, but also just visual cues in a visual medium, right? I mean, uh, the elves have pointy ears, the humans don't have pointy ears is a really, really simple... When you're trying to introduce a whole bunch of characters and show them, you know, so that people who don't already know who everybody is, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, just, you know, can just look at the screen and say that's an elf, that's a human, that's an elf, that's a human is really helpful, right? And so mm -hmm. sometimes you need though that kind of shorthand. Um, and if they're trying to on, tie it on... into the and if they're trying to tie it into the visual language that we know from the Peter Jackson films, those elves had pointy ears. And it became super mm -hmm. trendy for people to buy those pointy ears for three bucks in Spencer's yes. or whatever and yes. wear them around town and for people to know that that meant that they were a Lord of the Rings fan. So like yeah. there is that just kind of, I don't know, immediate attachment to it that exactly if you have to get something across quickly, we're all going to get it. I might not like it because it's just blatant. That's not how it's used, but I get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I agree about the rubber ears. I mean, that has yeah. become like an iconic <laughs> thing, right? Of, uh, we'll have like dozens uh, of them in their pockets, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Um, but my uh, colleagues I'm, used I'm to really, me about that. I'm, I'm really not worried about the show. Um, all that I saw, and that I heard, uh, it's nice to me. I, I'm very um, excited to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I I I don't suffer for anticipation. <laughs> I, I I just wanna I, I just wanna hope for the best, uh, the best for the books, for the talks, the mm. people, the friends, and and for Amazon because uh, we need uh, tell good stories uh, about about the good. Yeah. There was a really wonderful point on Twitter the other day that I think every we all saw where somebody commented saying we keep referring to it as the Amazon series. Nobody refers to the Jackson films as the New Line Cinema series, mm -hmm. you know? So there's just this attachment that we we are putting a studio onto it when we forget it's not the studio, it's JD and Patrick that were really impressed. Yeah. With us. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And that is, it is true. I, I'm, I, I hope that as time goes on, of course, the problem is most people have seen very little of the show except the Amazon logo, right? The Amazon, uh, you know, prime video logo. Um, and so they think of it as the Amazon show, right? right. I am hoping that more and more people can come around to seeing it as the JD and Patrick show rather than and, uh, as the Amazon show. Also, maybe um, seems a silly comment about me, but for us, it's it's very easy to remember Peter Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Peter Jackson. Jackson is a good name. Peter is a good name. It's <laughs> right. for us. For yeah, us, it's spelling in, right. in English is spelling. It's it's a nightmare. Right. You know. Right. And J D. Here, <laughs> don't don't. It's prime if does that work? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Well, um, we'll have to come up with a, a benefer type. Yeah, yeah. We'll have maybe, to maybe pain <laughs> pain and McKay McKay pain and McKay. Yes, pain McKay pain and McKay pain yeah. McKay pain and McKay. Maybe this. Maybe that. Yeah, we'll work yeah. on it. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it'll be interesting. I do think it is true. Um, you know, a couple of people are talking about how they've not really been in the public eye. Um, they will be, I believe uh, they will be. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, in case you're wondering, I am totally going to invite them to join us on Other Minds and Hands. Um, we'll see if they we'll see if they have a chance to do that. I hope to get them on the I show. Hope so. um, but uh, but anyway, yeah, no, the, the, the time will come. When they will be, when they will be much more in the public. I don't know exactly when that is. I'm not, you know, we're not privy to, you know, their uh, plans as far as that's concerned. But I am very. That's that's honestly, I'm looking forward to that more than I'm looking forward to new trailers or anything. I'm looking forward to the day when uh, when JD and Patrick are able to talk to the public and the public is able to hear from them and to get to know them a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. That will be a big a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you guys remember before, well, I don't know, maybe I'm showing my age, before the Jackson films, was there this kind of scrutiny? Like, were you expecting to see the street crowd of Peter Jackson before you went to see the film? So the there was guy? there was uncertainty. I mean, goodness, like, don't forget who Peter Jackson was before. Right. I mean, his the, films gave well, you no confidence. Nothing. Right. I mean, yeah. like, OK, so it, this unknown he was B nobody, horror movie nobody. director, B movie horror, B movie horror was what he was. And so, yeah, there was a lot of I, I don't know about scrutiny, because, again, scrutiny meant a different thing back before right. the Internet. Right. The Internet. Um, but um, but anxiety. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, th there were you could have found like in 1999, you could have found lots and lots and lots of Tolkien fans who were saying this is going to be a complete disaster, right? They've right. hired this hack director who's never yes. done anything and certainly never done anything like this, but he's never done anything at all. Like we're taking seriously. And, um, and this is, and, and now he's in charge of the Lord of the Rings. Oh man, right. this is what is going to happen. This, the thing is, uh, there was no social media then. So nowadays everything comes from this to a big and thing. It's so in your exactly. face so fast. Yeah. That's the difference. The difference is that all of the people, there were lots and lots of people saying that, but they didn't have social media accounts. So <laughs> nobody knew except like, you know, the people who hung out with them. Right. And they complained the one, to all the, the time. Ring, or the but, one ring that message boards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That was really but, kind uh, of the beginning of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought about the, uh, the, the difference of the situations 
uh, right, Peter Jackson, um, we don't have Instagram, YouTube, and uh, but now we have, but we, we now also have people like us who study, who yeah. talk about it. So we have some balance. Yeah. It, it's a good environment. Uh, I know with all the hate, with all the mispolite, but it's still a good environment. And I always thought about the Warner Bros. Uh, director, I don't know, who talk, well, Peter Jackson, it's your name, right? You want to make two moves about the Lord of the Ring with some kind of million dollars, right? No, let's make do three. three. Yeah. <laughs> I will give you more millions. I I never saw you before. I will give more millions, <laughs> and you do three movies. It's in New it's Zealand, insane. not under our watchful eye. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's insane. It looks like joke. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I would like to hear what his pitch was like because he must have been very convincing. That has to have been one of the greatest <laughs> pitches of all time. I mean, yeah. it really it really has to have been. I mean, it's it's uh where it was the end of a financial year and they really had to shift some cash so they were just like <laughs> right maybe it was just, uh, some we kind of spend coincidence. This budget. But, yeah. Yeah, still it's hard to imagine them putting that kind of budget out there uh you know because they had it sitting around in the corners of the room, right? Right. Um but uh yeah anyway no i think it's it's it is there is so much more similarity between this moment now and the kind of fear anxiety and anger that people are having um there's way more similarity between this and the year before the the peter jackson film came out than people who just don't remember it uh, realize you know um you know, I've heard people say like, oh, but the fan base is so angry about this. And I'm like, no, the fan base is exactly where it was before the Peter Jackson films. And therefore, I am mm -hmm. not worried about the, you know, if the show turns out to be great, which it might be, if it turns out to be great, people will come around just like they did for the Peter Jackson films. Right. Um, um, you know, if not, not and no loss. Right. But um, anyway, yeah. So like there's... you said, there's going to be so much to discuss regardless. Won't well, it be fun? Right. Exactly. We, we saw what the first trilogy uh, on cinema did, and we, the second one too. The, the second was horrible, but uh, Tolkien uh, remained getting more and more readers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Affected and that, nothing. It will still be a net gain. And it is fascinating to think, and I, can, I didn't even know this about the publication, the translation of... of the Lord of the Rings, how late that came in 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 in, uh, in Brazil, and it's just fascinating for me to think of. Um, so now, like there, there have been times before, believe it or not, when I have still encountered Tolkien scholars, Tolkien people, who have said, like I was actually talking to somebody just a couple months ago who said, I don't believe that there is a single person whoever watched the movie first and became a, a, a like a genuine Tolkien fan or scholar <laughs> afterwards. And I'm like, I, I, let me give you names. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, I, and so normally my reaction to that is like, let me try to count the people I know. I mean, I've been, I will give it one country. Well, exactly. Yeah, right. That, that's going to be my new answer. My new answer the to that is going to be, let, let, let me introduce you to Brazil. Would you like to the talk to talk to the people at Harper Collins, Brazil, about the extent to which, you know, Tolkien uh, readership has picked up? I mean, come on. Right? Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. But, and uh, I, I believe that we have so much to talk about, about the books, about the the series, about the movies, and always I always saw the the glass half full. I don't right. know if you have this uh, yes, half full yes, or half yes. half full. Well, we have a big company, a good people who know the history, the the, the life of Tolkien, and mm -hmm. answer our questions. We have money, we have audience. Why not? Mm -hmm. And also, it's Let's funny. Do this. Uh, all this hate, some people say, all oh, these self proclaimed token experts who went to London. <laughs> I never said I was a token expert. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know where they took this from. 
yeah. but it's funny to to see exactly exactly yeah, the well, okay. it, you know the people have spoken as far as you guys are concerned uh you have uh, a wonderful program down there at tolkien talk and uh, a marvelous community i've, I've really enjoyed i appreciate you sharing your community with us today we've had yeah. so many uh, <laughs> of your brazilian listeners uh with us here in the chat today um and i have to tell you this has been by far the most uh pleasant and cheerful uh, chat stream we've had uh, the whole time we've been yeah. doing other minds and hands so it's been it's been a <laughs> nice. great blessing uh and anyway so I just, it's so exciting to learn more about what you guys are doing uh down there in brazil um to to sort of uh learn more about tolkien culture we're uh definitely hoping to uh continue this relationship um uh one of our uh uh signum folks uh, on the chat was saying, um, how do you say the word moot in Portuguese? Uh, and of course, thinking exactly the same thing that I talked uh -huh. with you guys about, I would love, we would love to come and do, uh, I, I think, uh, Signum University would really like to team up with you guys to do uh, an event, to do a little Tolkien conference down there uh, in Brazil sometime, maybe down in Sao Paulo or something. Uh, in, uh, we'll do it, yeah. sure. Yeah. It, it, it would be awesome. We'd really, really love it. It's that. already so, on our plans. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so th we're, we're definitely, there's. I think there's there's a lot of stuff that we can do together, which I'm really, uh, yes. uh, really, really excited about. So anyway, Awesome. And you guys are just so nice, so thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank so you pleasant. Much. But it's been a joy. And uh, the, the word for moot is encontro. Encontro. And it's like meeting, but meeting right. for us, it's it's reunion. And reunion for you, it's a kind of, but reunion, it's a different way. And meeting, it's encontro. It's like a uh, 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 mood encontro. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Very cool. All right. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Cool. No, 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 no. Please, please go ahead. Well, first we had you at Talk and Talk. Now we are here. It's we never imagined we would be here someday. This is Signum University. Here I am. <laughs> so uh, it's, I, I got to see it, that. I got to see the Portuguese translation. Cesar brought that to London. Uh, so I, I got to yes. see that. Uh, uh, I got to sign it. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was fun. I'm I'd, I'd never seen. I, I, I knew it happened, but I'd never seen the Portuguese translation <laughs> before. So, yeah, that's fantastic. So uh, being here with the one who started talking podcasts in internet it's real uh, uh, it's a great adventure for us and it's a challenge because we have a name to to carry on right and that's what we we try to to honor token and all the people who who make this tokenist world this this fandom we know sometimes they are we are too passionate about it and there are some some fights but we, we always overcome them and <laughs> and we are all friends in the end yeah. and with you two maggie and corey we know as i said in the beginning it's the friendship between you guys and us uh, it's something that will make grow even more and we we can't say much now but uh we had a whole dinner with corey maggie unfortunately wasn't there but we talked about many future plans yeah with corey yeah, many, lots many good of, things. Lots of fun come ideas out. we have. Yeah, we'll we'll be yes. we'll be announcing some 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 new things soon. I hope uh, some new yes. uh, collaborations between Signum and uh, and you guys down in down in Brazil. Really excited about the potentials there. So it, it, it will be great. And next week, I believe we're gonna have a live uh, 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 membership live, and we'll begin to talk about this with our member members. And I think it's the beginning of a great project. Yes. And I can only say thank you both for having us here. Sorry for our uh, uh, broken English. We try our best. <laughs> My one, you, yours is a great English. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for for the opportunity. And I don't know what else to say. Every time you guys want to come come to our channel and talk to us about the series, about talking about your works. And new projects, the door is open. You are always, always welcome. 
And well, thank and you very much. And thank yeah. you guys. I mean, we'll have lots to talk about over the next five years and then some. So yes. I'm sure this is just the first of many appearances on this side. But yeah, very thank you good. so much for coming along. Yeah, thanks Sergio. very much. Thanks very Sergio, much. Sergio, you 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 tell the uh, you tell that the door is open, but you you don't talk about the tea. The tea yeah. is on the table also. <laughs> That's right. Tea is, is, is on the table. <laughs> yes. You can come. And I, I always think about journey when I, I thought, okay, it's a journey. And I felt like a hobbit, gain the world, uh, get out and new new people, um, mm -hmm. uh, new some elves, some dwarves, some great men, great women and it it's a strange thing frodo you put your your feet uh outside the the house the yeah you and never know. yeah you never know and uh, i'm very happy for this opportunity we um, uh, we read your book uh listening to your podcast uh, yesterday i was uh watching the aphorism uh, yes yeah, Class. yeah, the aphorism duel. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blows my mind. Like uh, Bilbo leaves leaves to Frodo all the uh, the bag hand, the mithril clothes, the sting, but in the end, the luck. Uh, the luck gives the, the luck at the end. Is the yeah. the the ultimate gift. <laughs> yes. The yeah. strange luck, uh, Bilbo's lucky and and Frodo use it in many yeah. times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and whoa <laughs> yeah that's yeah. a master class <laughs> oh, man. Um, that was that was awesome yeah that was last night's class it was that was fun yeah, yeah. I was uh I, it was it, one of those several times I mean I usually I am uh, I feel just the same way like we're having these conversations and I'm like whoa I never thought of that before or like last night we're reading that paragraph that I'm like has this always been in the book I don't even remember this paragraph like this is incredible <laughs> anyway yeah no exploring the Lord of the Rings is great fun awesome well we will we'll have you guys back to talk again thanks everybody for joining us this has been a, a, a delightful show uh, and we will be back next week I'm fortunately done traveling for a bit no wait we won't be no back you're not week. here next week I'm done traveling but I can't be here next week because I have a really boring thing to do but when i'm finished with my boring stuff we'll be back next week so in two weeks we'll be back uh with other minds and hands again um uh perhaps with some more fun guests so uh look looking forward to that thanks uh thanks sergio and 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 cesar good luck uh it's down so there in brazil guys. keep up the great work and we'll talk to you guys again soon sure. bye now bye bye, -bye.